the end of the year, KUM's Tyler Matsunani brings you the latest on the agency and how the Brights are on their future. The Guam Regional Transit Authority services about 144,000 riders annually. Many come from low-income backgrounds and rely on GRTA as their main mode of transportation. However, riders are constantly faced with challenges with the island's bus system as they try to move themselves from poverty to prosperity. Most of the bus stops under GRTA are signs on the sidewalk, leaving those that use the system exposed to the elements. Riders are lucky if they at least have a bench to sit on as they wait for the bus. One rider, John, expressed frustration over an issue he's often faced with when it comes to the few existing shelters. Uh, so, uh, well, it's a bit, we can't fit in the, the bus shelter because uh, the other occupants that are in there, some of them are not riding the bus, they're just hanging out here. Another bump in the road is the need for more GRTA vehicles. Currently, there are only 26 buses and vans serving the entire island. GRTA Director Selva Balta aims to double that number by the end of 2022. With more buses, we'll be able to provide a more safe and reliable uh, transit operations. Improving the island's public transit system will yield positive results not only for riders, but for the entire community. He explains how reliable transportation and a thriving economy are intertwined. We have an 11% unemployment rate. We have an almost 25% poverty rate. Let's face it, we have a lot of people out there who, um, because of no transportation, no reliable transportation, can't find and can't keep jobs. Upgrading and modernizing operations would lead to a boosted economy, but that's not all. Babalta details how it could also lower crime rates. When we bring people to work, they get employed, uh, they're going to hopefully uh, stray away from committing crimes. So there's a tremendous need to improve transit, transit um, you know, operations. Earlier this year, GRTA was awarded $9.5 million that will be used to purchase electric vehicles and charging stations. The island can begin seeing electric vehicles on the road as early as 2022 to 2023. He also revealed that the agency will receive $11 million under the bipartisan infrastructure bill. This will go toward purchasing more electric buses and 55 typhoon-proof shelters around the island. Babalta took over operations in 2019 and explained that he takes the personal responsibility of applying for every grant he can. As we recall, their FY21 budget was cut by $300,000, leaving them to work with just $2.9 million. He says it's not an overnight trip, but the agency is being diligent to make things better for riders. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. A sign of the times on Saipan, hundreds of cars packed Beach Road on Saipan, the Department of Public Works energy campaign drawing many residents to sit in traffic. KUM's Tomas Manglotnia tells us why. And it's, you know, we came here at 7.30, there was already a line. The line stretched as far as the eye can see for hours over the weekend. This is our annual energy awareness campaign that we help the community. We give out, we distribute LED, LED light bulbs or a portable stove. So uh, because of the pandemic last year, we were not able to do out the uh, portable stove. So that's why we're kind of like, you know, we damped it up and there's a lot. They passed out nearly 600 packages to island residents lining up before they even set up. We just want to help the community with the awareness and conservation. So this is one way for, to help out, for, you know, for them to help reduce their uh, uh, utility bill. Some say it is perhaps a sign of the times. And I'm surprised that there's just a lot of people coming out. I thought that maybe, you know, they won't really because everybody's scared, but, um, you know, we're taking all the safety precautions right now. Tomas Manglonia for KUM News on Saipan. And on the next episode of Pacific Matters, KUM's Tomas Manglonia explores the cannabis industry in the Northern Mariana Islands. Here's Tomas with a preview. On the next episode of Pacific Matters, we're taking a closer look at cannabis in the CNMI. My name is Victor Cabrera. I am the owner of Team Marianas, uh, the first licensed cannabis grower in the CNMI. Um, we are here in my shop. Uh, this is my flower room where we're currently in. Uh, the plants in the background are in their flowering stage. 
My name is Alexis Hofschneider. I am the general manager of Commonwealth Cannabis. Anyone from any walk of life can enjoy for whatever reason that they have, right? And so when you walk into the store, you won't feel a certain, we won't, you won't feel like we've made certain types of assumptions about who you are. We're just gonna sell you cannabis. Tomas Maglotnia, thank you. We look forward to tuning in Monday after primetime. Christmas lights and decorations can be seen throughout the island this month, especially around Tumon. One hotel decided to join in on the Christmas fun and trying something new for the first time. KUAM's Daniel Perez has more. The Hotel Nico is trying something new and different this year for its guests and island residents. Acting General Manager Yusuke William Shinazaki. This is the first time we try this lighting show. We used to have a traditional uh, decorations, but this year it is all about the givings. You know, uh, Ireland is having a very tough time last two years. We wanted to give something back to uh, community on this island. So we wanted to try something in a different way to cheer up the people's heart. Shinozaki added what the light show contributes to and what the guests can do after. On that tree, this is actually, again, first time with the vendors and Hotel Nico Guam collaborating. Uh, we're uh, having the Christmas um, the song that uh, correlates with the uh, Hotel Nico's uh, image and also this uh, contribution to uh, strokes. So uh, the holiday feelings and the uh, support to the community, support to the patients. So it's really fun at the same time, hold the chair up. So it's very uh, nice and calm. They can uh, stick around having pictures with these beautiful uh, uh, trees or we're offering the a variety of uh, pastries and takeaways at the fountain lobby. Or if they wish to, they can stay in the uh, a Magellan uh, restaurant, which we offer Japanese uh, menus and also all-you-can-eat buffet at the international themes. Along with the light show, a fundraiser is also taking place. Part of the revenues that we generate from the accommodations and restaurants, part of the revenue will be donating as, a, uh, as, a, as our fund to the organizations who take care of those uh, cancer, uh, stroke patients. And also, if you wish to be a part of it, you can purchase the ribbon and then you can uh, hang on the trees and then that purchased uh, uh, price will be fully be part of the donations. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. And she's back. Our adorable little baker Kiki Leon Guerrero is ready to share with us a holiday recipe. Decided to put it in this bowl. Now, my mommy's 
just gonna put it, this one that was the food coloring inside of the hard blender. Now that the green one's done in the mixer, we are gonna make it like a spoonful of each in on the pan, an ungreased pan. You're gonna get like this much dough and you're gonna just, if you want more, you can. And you're just gonna like form it into a ball like it's Play-Doh. Then you're gonna, by the way, you should space it out a bit because if, if it goes together, it's gonna just like go together and it's gonna stick together. So you're just gonna roll balls, roll balls, if when, and then you have to space them out like that. Now that we're done rolling these all into a ball, we are now gonna put them in the oven, but the green one is a Grinch cookie, and the brown one is a snowball. Now that it's out, out of the oven, and we let it sit to cool, I can like touch them now, so we are gonna grab both of these, and I'm gonna just put them in powder, and then to make them white for both, and then it should look, yeah, I'm gonna grab the spoon and just put it over, and then show you guys. It should look like that, and then I'm just gonna put it at the top of the tree. And that's how you make snowball cookies and Grinch cookies. Happy holidays! Stay with us next on Weekend Edition, we have Culture Club and still to come, Dave Delgado with sports. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. The holidays are here, and you know what that means. Time to gather with family and friends, dress up our homes, and explore the Christmas season in paradise. Why not share these moments for a chance to win $100 in cash? Log on to visitguam.com slash Instaguam today to participate in the Guam Visitors Bureau's hashtag Instaguam photo and video contest. A winner will be chosen every week, so share your best holiday moments now and win. Brought to you by GVB, making Guam a better place to live, work, Work and visit. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Welcome back. This week's Culture Club feature is artist Martin C. Castro Jr. Culture Club, brought to you by Hanum, the freshest bottled water made in Guam. My name is Martin Kamatsu Castro Jr. And the type of art I do, I do quite a lot of art. But my main art is like shell carving. I just make a jewelry with it. I, like the shell, I carve it into a shape and then I make it into a pendant then make it like necklace or bracelet or anklet uh, to make it more simple I make a wearable art and I've been doing this since I was 19 years old and 38 now so that's a pretty long time Right out of high school, I immediately started working as a, you could say, club mate in PIC. And so, I was always stationed in the, everywhere, but my favorite place to work at was the lifeguard at the beach. Then I would, well, patrolling, I would always walk up and down in the sand. And I would always pick up shells and just look at it and wonder how can I make this so that I can wear it and then from there I just like kept on collecting 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 and then 
the the passion for it went more uh, more broad when I met a uh, fellow artist. His name is uh, Sebastian Camacho. I believe he's in Guam right now. Uh, he was doing the type of thing that I'm doing now, and then from there, I kind of wanted to be mentored by him, and I kept uh, visiting him for like a good three to four weeks every day, nonstop, just learning how he's doing it. And then a little bit after he moved to Guam, and then no one else was doing it. But from there, I just decided to just perfect it and master it. And from there, I gained a whole lot of respect on the island of Saipan and also like around the world also. A lot of people, they try to, to purchase uh, what I make, like from Russia, Japan, America. A lot of people, they try to get a hold of what I do because they it's very different from from what they usually see when they go in the, in the stores they even anywhere you go into the store you cannot really find this kind of jewelry i had to learn how sebastian did it because i didn't want to do it myself and blindly because i know i was going to get hurt so i had to learn it and when i learned it you know along the way i got hurt i cut my fingers sh- uh, sh- the particles fly in my eye you know but from there I learned safety first and then after that it's all what do you call it muscle memory and after that it's the, what you call it the the detailing of the shell so you gotta grind it and shape it and after that you gotta sand it manually sand it sand it keep on sanding it to all different grits and then from there, you just pray that there's no scratch at all and you did a good job and people would appreciate your art. For me, it's a culture preservation, but it, I don't know because I use machinery. I don't use, um, you know what you call it, uh, ancient ways to do it. I use like machines, like Dremel machine, bench grinder, and sand tape and all of that. So it's a kind of culture, but not, for me, it's not, um, it's a kind of a modern, modern culture mixed with old culture, but with a twist because I use like machinery, you know, there's nothing old about it. it I just don't see, see it as like what do you call it like ancient culture way of doing things because you know there's nothing old about it it's just the way I do it that it's like modern and uh, what's your uh, just my last question is how can people uh, find you or get a hold of you if they're interested in learning about your work or getting some of your pieces well um uh, so I'm I'm moving to Japan soon next year and there's no one else for me that that knows how to do these things so some there's carvers out there in, on the island but not the way I carve and when I carve you can tell when you look at my Jewish if you go to the Marana's creation store, you can see that it's very different from what other people do with the shelves. I can teach people how to do it. They, it's up to them from there. If they want to pursue it, not a problem. Um, they can always uh, go to Marana's creation store in Garapa and they can give you my contact number or I have a business card there and they can always contact me on IG. I just have a, just one one message to the people that, you know, it, you need to be inspired. You need to be inspired to pursue art. Do what inspires you and, you know, when you want to 
be very good at it. Keep doing it, never stop. Culture Club, brought to you by Hanum, the freshest bottled water made in Guam. Sports is up next with Dave Delgado. Keep it here, you're watching KUAF. Our family was recently challenged with a difficult medical condition where my son needed a liver transplant. And I asked Cabo Select Care to assist me with that and, and he required off-island care. In fact, it can only be taken care of off-island. Uh, so Cabo Select Care was there to help uh, with all the referrals and the off-island coverage. Cabo Select Care, healthcare that's always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. New Hyundai Tucson. This is a brand new thing. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. UOG's baseball tryouts were held at the GW Baseball Field in Manila. The Tritons are looking for UOG students, transfer students, and high school seniors wanting to pursue the sport at the collegiate level. I see a lot of uh, hidden talent. You know, uh, we got a, a bunch of uh, players coming out of the dorms. Um, they've been here for about a year or so and uh, haven't been out in the, the baseball scene just yet. So we're here to bridge that and make that happen, uh, get, the, get this hidden talent uh, exposed and, uh, yeah, get them out there and playing ball like uh, they're, they're passionately and desirably waiting for, man. The Tritons are still accepting eligible players to try out. UOG will be holding a baseball clinic on December 18th and 19th from 9 to 12 in the afternoon at the GW Field and on December 20th through the 23rd from 4 to 6 p.m. at GW. As a freshman, uh, looking out to all these players, we have talent, we have what it takes, and we have people who are willing to come out and support. I'm grateful for this opportunity to be able to revamp the program and relive it, as my father was also a part of this program, and I'm just very excited. I'm glad to see the turnout of everybody that came out this weekend, and we hope that more comes out as the excitement and the word uh, uh, gets out that the UOG program is back. We're trying to bring it back to where it was in the 90s, and we hope that everyone that's interested in playing baseball and attending UOG go ahead and come out, and we'll be here to help and support you guys and get you guide you along the way. Two things you're going to accomplish, you're going to go to school, try to earn your degree, and at the same time have fun playing baseball with a gr group of guys that are aiming for the same goal. For more info, contact Coach Roki Alcantara Jr. at 671-747-4579. Proof of vaccination will be required. In other news, big shout out to DeAndre Cruz from San Mateo College. Cruz wrapped up his final JUCO football season for the Bulldogs where he played linebacker. DeAndre battled back from an injury early in the season to take back his starting position and finish the season strong. He got his first Division I scholarship offer from Stony Brook University in New York. The 2018 FD graduate went from playing running back to the linebacker position. Congrats. We'll keep you posted on his final decision. Championship hoops in the 10 and under division. Ethan Domingo pulling up from the outside for the Nets. He's good for it. Money's in the bank. Gabriella Connor. Running off the turnover, waits for the defender to run by. She hits the baseline jumper for the Hornets. The game was tied at 19 with 8.55 left to play. Yup, we're showing free throws. Josiah Leon Guerrero collects on two the long way. He hit both free throws. Tristan Santos with the steal. Clear path to the rim for Santos who goes off the backboard for the easy layup. Hornets get the win 27 to 26. It was the Sonics and Kings in the 16 under championship game. Big man Noah Hernandez and one baskets good. Jace De La Cruz checking in for three. Yes, sir. John Mercado was waiting for his time to go to work. Gets the pass at the top of the key. Nice elevation on the play. Bank was open all night. Keanu Anderson putting the clamp down on defense. Anderson hustles to pick up the loose ball. Takes it to the rack for the finish. He's been putting in work during the offseason. 
Ryu, Rick Lai with the quick take to the basket, getting inside for the score. Anderson answers, wide open up top, makes the defense pay for not getting out. Quick outlet pass by the Kings. Devontae Parker, one dribble and goes up with it. Basket and the foul. Sonics beat the Kings 24 to 13. Mercado working for his shot, screened by Noah. Pull up jumper is money, cha-ching. Last bucket here by De La Cruz for the corner three. The season high Titans visiting the Lady Sharks and Jigo for their Issa Girls Volleyball semifinal game. Sanchez, the top seed, entering the playoffs. The home team led 14-10 in the first set after Kena Kanemoto scored back-to-back -back points. Sadie Tamanda closed it out with back-to-back -back aces for the 25-23 win. Simon Sanchez taking advantage of their serving opportunities. They scored six unanswered points and went on to win the set 25-11. Kena Kanemoto took over in the third set, fans yelling MVP. Kanemoto gave the Sharks the 24-23 lead. Amande found an opening in the defense for the game-winning point, 27-25. It feels good because, you know, it's my senior year and I want to, like, leave something to, to Sanchez. Of course, like, going to the ship is, like, first for me. I, have, I haven't gone there, so we want to take it. We're going to try our best to take it. It's the best feeling ever because uh, our senior is our setter, and she's leaving. So, yeah, we're going to miss her sets. We're going to do our best and make sure we remember all our mistakes so we can practice them. I still have two more years, so it's, it feels good to be up there. I love my team more than anything, and I'm glad to be here. The reason why I came out here is because I like how the people, the way we communicate and the way we like uh, work with each other. Sanchez plays the winner between JFK and GW. The Geckos and Islanders play tonight at the FD Phoenix Center. In programming news, this Monday, December 13th on the stations of KUAM, we get you started with a doubleheader on KUAM TV 11 at 4 in the morning. NFL on CBS, the Las Vegas Raiders at Kansas City Chiefs. Keep it locked on Channel 11 at 725 in the morning. More NFL on CBS, Buffalo Bills at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then at 1120, NBC Sunday Night Football on KUAM TV 8, the Chicago Bears at Green Bay Packers. KUAM Sports Weekend Roundup is brought to you by Gatorade. KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News, we'll feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get Guam back on track. Log on to visitguam.com to see how your business can receive the designation, what businesses in our community are Guam Safe Certified, and have the WTTC Safe Travel Certified. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels, that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of the birthday shout outs from the Coastal Premier Birthday Club. It's time for your weekend. Happy birthday greetings. And on Saturday, we say happy birthday to Barbara Bloss who blows out the candles this weekend and your family says we hope you have a great Saturday, a great weekend, and a great birthday. 
And on Sunday the 12th, Travis Borja. Happy birthday to dad. You're getting love from Traven, Tristan, Trevin, Trent, and Trinity Joy. So, Barbara on Saturday and Travis on Sunday, we hope the both of you have the best birthdays ever. And remember, you can be a part of the Coach Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KOAM.com. Now be sure to include with your photo, your name, and birthday. From all of us at Guam's News Network, thank you for watching and have a safe weekend. So we close out the show showcasing how families are decorating their homes for the holidays and how they are making spirits bright. Don't forget if you have pictures or videos you'd like to